A lot of people think that school is supposed to be a place where we prepare for society. But I would argue that basically school needs to be a place where we incubate thinkers who are actually going to fix our problems, that are going to rethink our systems. Because if we're just creating a society that's just preparing for what we already have, we're not progressing, we're not growing. There is just a whole host of issues that need to be solved in the world that can be solved through technology. There are one billion adults in the world that don't know how to read and write. And it's because they did not have access to a good education or to even an education whatsoever. Education is going to change in that we are actually going to be able to reach them. All over the world with technology, we can create infinite courses for people to learn for free. What we're seeing right now with mobile devices is the first step towards democratizing education. One of the reasons I, I'm just enamored with Udacity in general is just this idea of a new type of university, enabling uh, people who otherwise may not have had the opportunity to begin their careers in tech. We build courses centered around computer science topics, programming languages, information technology. Traditional degrees uh, at universities, they include a lot of theory, a lot of classware to help prepare you as best they possibly can for any number of things. We ended up with this idea of a nano degree and have it be really tailored, really focused toward a particular career. For instance, web developers, data analysts, iOS engineers. It's been really exciting to develop nano degrees with AT&T because they have a really solid understanding of software development that reaches actually much farther than we do in Silicon Valley. We would have significantly less impact without the support of at and Our goal is to enable students to learn wherever they are, um, whether it's on the train, on the bus. What does that mean for the technologies that we build? What does that mean for what value the classroom serves as opposed to what value the home or the anytime, anywhere learning environment? We're trying to get education to everybody in the world. And for us, the mobile network is, is basically the means that allows us to do this. Duolingo is a free language learning platform. About 85% of our users are, are using it from mobile phones. There are, in fact, more people learning a language on Duolingo than in the entire US public school system. I think a main question that we're dealing with right now is how can we use all of this information and all this technology to really make education adaptive? We have the ability to teach you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands of students. So our main insight to that is Data. If you look at the offline standard school system, improvement happens at the rate of decades because it takes years to really collect this data, whereas with Duolingo we can improve in a matter of hours. The fact that our content can be edited on the fly and tweaked and changed and, and tested is just an amazing thing for our students. With this sort of technology and mobile education, we can actually tailor education to each person on almost a tutor level. And that was completely impossible before in the format of a traditional classroom. We've largely always thought about learning happening only in a particular parts of our lives, right? When we go to school, when we go to college, when we take a course. But then the mobile network also allows us on demand, can go pretty much find out anything we want at any time. Um, that's pretty powerful. All of these things that are immersing society and these other ways of engaging in life, these things need to be in the education process. Mobile takes advantage of an interface that students and kids are already really familiar with and comfortable with to provide new concepts that are unfamiliar and maybe a little bit uncomfortable. Okay, I'm definitely not pointing right away now, so. Well, Sky Safari shows you a simulation uh, of what is up in the sky at the point in time you're, you're standing on Earth and the direction you're holding your phone, right? You know, touching and swiping to rotate a view of the sky around or to see how the planets in the solar system are related in a three-dimensional sense is a very like visceral way to get these concepts into people's heads. In many ways, visualization and simulation can allow a person to see things that go well beyond a static 2D illustration. So we've built games that allow you to DJ the tectonic plates, to understand uh, the different phenomenons around geoscience. Games are awesome for a number of reasons for education. They are super engaging. They're challenging. Games can also be like a really great place to try out something that you've learned and have a hard time visualizing. 
In order to create an agile thinker, you need to create lots of different experiences. Yeah, the question is, is why, do, why should we care about this stuff? You know, computers were invented really in the modern sense to send spacecraft to the moon. And even before that, we invented mathematics to describe the motions of planets in the sky so we'd understand when to plant crops. Those are connections that we don't really think about from day to day. And I think when you get people's brains back to that kind of like deep fundamental thinking, new inventions come out of it, new things appear, new, new technologies appear. You cannot, in many industries, impact someone's life so directly that their lives just change forever. But education just has a huge, huge impact on that person's life. Basically, learning is everywhere. And if mobile devices start really enhancing and making that explicit and provide tools for that anytime, anywhere learning, then really the world becomes school. Life becomes school. If we can put education in everyone's pockets, I think that's a huge success story.